the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. So I hope you enjoy this video. I'm going to break it down into segments. 25, A, B, through whatever it's going to end up to be. But that's what we're going to do. And also don't forget, Happy Mother's Day. This particular week, this session is going into the day of Mother's Day. So I wish all of you a Happy Mother's Day. And uh, appreciate them for what they have done. But always remember, appreciate God for sending his son. <laughs> Amen. I just want to make sure if, if, you, if you get anything else out of it, the, the point is the history. If the history, and I'm thinking about talking about modern day, the, the cultural war that's going on, and, and how people sit there and say that the, um, the history makes the children feel bad. I just want to, I just want to make the now I edit this piece for my video. What I want to be able to say is that if history makes children feel bad, so therefore we want to ban books. We want to make sure we don't do any CRT because somebody told us that it teaches people the agenda of how to hate other people or be hated by other people. I just want to say I, what I got out of this is let's, instead of trying to hide history, but you can't. You know, with the cell phones and the computers, your children are going to get the history no matter what. Even if you, even the false narrative and the lies that we want to right, portray ourselves to be, the children are going to get the history. And the children will feel bad or disgusted about the history. But what we, I think, is an opportunity to start saying is, hey, that behavior, not a supper with God. That behavior, jeopardize anybody who lived that period, those periods, and died in those periods in jeopardy of their soul. Uh, not making it to heaven, but to hell. Or even the lake of fire in the end. But what I like to say, let's look, let's check this out. I think it makes sense. Even for you as an individual. Is your history Instead of sitting there feeling condemned about your history, turn it into a praise report of saying, God snatched me from the fire. God sent his son and he is forgiven. Because I can't justify bad behavior. You can't justify bad behavior. No way you can. You can sit there and do all you want, but you can't. But you can say, I plead the blood of Jesus. I know that he has forgiven me of my sin. He has cast it as far as the east and the west. And I have repented. I haven't arrived. I'm still going to slip. I'm still going to stumble. But I don't practice bad behavior anymore. I'm moving away from bad behavior. I'm moving away from hate. I'm moving away from lying. I'm moving away from cheating. I'm moving away from the things that, that God hates and moving toward the things that God loves. I'm moving away from corrupt fruit to bearing good fruit. And I can only bear that because of him. So yes, I got a back. We as a people, we as a nation, we as a group of people have some history that, that makes it good, make you feel bad. But the praise report is the blood of Jesus has forgiven me of my sins of the past and has blessed me to point to the right way, which is Yeshua, which is Lord. Amen? Think about that. That's what I want to be able to do. I want to bring this up so if I can bring this as the beginning of the video. But if not, I think I'm going to probably just come off live and just go ahead and just make a quick intro. That's what I did for the last video. I'm going to do it for this video as well. Is this, I'm going to bring that out. It's not my past that makes a difference. It's my Savior who has forgiven me through the blood of Christ and has shown me the right way, 
which is follow and bear good fruit. My goal is check my fruit. My goal is for you to check your fruit and let everyone know that God, love God and light. People want to see that. That's what the whole world is waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Amen. All right, God bless you. I want you to have a great, happy Mother's Day. Uh, thank you, mothers, for your love, your mercy, and grace. I thank you. And God loves you. And I do too. Stay blessed. Bye-bye. <laughs> the, the study today, the, we'll, we'll put it back on track and tell them come from, is, and that you saw the title, it's the bad things that you've done, people have done. And it may, even if it makes children feel bad, the point I want to bring out, and I think it's important for anybody that's listening, is you, you, can, you can try to put things in the dark, because that's what darkness likes to hang out in anyway. Evil likes to hang out in the darkness. The thing is, God sees everything. And if you believe in God, then let's talk about what he feels. Because it, it's interesting, like you said, either for your fear of, of, of being overwhelmed and, 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 and being pushed to the back, or the fear of your children feeling bad because the narrative that you painted is a false narrative. And, and it, it, it got some bad and ugly in it. And, and the thing is, though, even though you may want to hide it from them, and I don't think you really do. I think so. I think you have people at home teach us a false narrative and they're trying to find a way to make sure that they don't go to school and get a true narrative, you know, or an actual narrative. That's, oh, yeah. that's the issue. Oh, you know, it's no different than, you know, they're constantly telling these children, you know, you're better than these children. Right, the narrative. They're yeah. beneath you, you know, they're, they're monkeys. They're, they're, they don't, they, they can't learn, they can't do this, this, and that. These kids have this mindset that they're, you know, they, they take that stuff to heart because it's their parents telling them that. Exactly. Then, then when they, they go, go out to and they get around these people. <laughs> yeah. This right. attitude that right. I'm better than you and all this other stuff. But, but when these people of color <laughs> are yeah. confronted by them, and right. resist. They find out real quick yeah. Yeah. that their only superiority is based on the laws and the enforcement that they have backing them. Yeah. Because that's what they run to after they figure out that they are less than when it comes to these these physical altercations or these these uh, uh, communicational de debates and, and, and everything else, you know, yeah. about about anything. But it's just it's just something about it. And I agree. And the thing I want to be to do is to don't lie about our Savior. Don't lie about God. Don't don't try to you, you can't fool God. That's the whole point. I guess what the you're saying. It's not about fooling God. They don't care about that. But they, they have to. They don't see the they problem. Don't, they, you know what they care about? They care about this life and this life yeah. only. And but they, they, you even even those who profess mm, mm. to be a child of God still prefer the privilege of this world than of the next. But and that's a, and that's a tragedy, isn't it? Because the next it is. That is, is it, the, but the crazy thing is I mean it, it, it when you when you when you boil this stuff down mm. and you get down not boil but when you peel this onion down and you get to the to the core of it and and, and the cradle of it. Yes sir. And understand who these children of God were, who Adam and Eve were, who they are. Who they are. Let me, I stand correct. Who they are, but they, they, they still are. They, they, 
and you 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 realize that these people are people of color and you see how the creator of everything is supporting these people and obviously there's a jealousy there's a fear there's a desire to you know to be a part of that and you can be and you it, but now you can be yeah you know now you can be and so that you now that you have been given this opportunity to be engrafted yeah into the true vine Come on now. You want to take the original branches and remove them. Oh, yeah. So yeah. that you can still be privileged more so. The Bible talks about do not look down on these because they were given the oracles of God. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it, it's in the word. Right. It's in the word. And so, and that's what's happening. You have these people who've been engrafted in. And they think that they are superior and that this is their privilege. And we are, are the ones who have been privileged to be engrafted in. So... If if it was not so, it would not be in the word. Yes, sir. Seriously. Yeah. And, and then yeah. the fact that we, how we always continue to strive, and to and no matter how much we are pressed down, how much we are downtrodden, we rise up. I mean, we we still God. stand out, even in that. Yeah. Even in. The, the worst conditions. Mm. It was the worst we conditions. It was a bad condition. Cultivated. We designed. We manufactured. We uplifted. We 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 did everything that was necessary for this nation to exist. Mm. Not 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 to mention the one that was colonized. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, yeah. Not to mention the, the original <laughs> colonization that happened there. You know, they come in and they just appropriate what's there and then take over and then uh, uh, infiltrate, take over, and then assimilate into the masses and then erase the history and say that it was always them. <laughs> but they get us here and do the same thing. Mm -hmm. But what I love about the word, it always talks about it, and it's just being revealed. The revelations are just being, you know, revealed, and then the true children of God are being recognized. Yeah. And and, and, and <clears throat> you start to see what these these scriptures are really really mean, like in Ephesians. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Uh, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord, Yeshua. Come on, man. Hath blessed us mm. with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. Yes. According as he has chosen us. He wow. has chosen us. He has chosen us. In yeah. him before the foundation of the world. Now, if, <laughs> if he chose us, then who's going to unchoose us? Right. Who would try to unchoose us? Mm, mm, mm. And that's why I'm trying to take that saying. mantle. How could yeah. you, 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 if 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 you had any sports where you choosing your team out of a group of people, if you weren't chosen, you weren't. You sat on the side <laughs> and waited for the next exactly round to come. Yeah. You know, but but we were. I mean, and it just keeps going on and on and on. Well, 
Well, you don't get anything wrong with that. Like the fact that Mohammed said, the entire creation waited and grown for the manifestations of the children of God. Yeah. You know, and and, and that was the thing I wanted to be able to put in there is that you 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 also been chosen. Everybody, you know, what I'm saying yeah. you all have been grafted in if you want to be grafted in. Yeah. You, but but you don't be you don't. You don't bring in the the, the, the bad things. It, you know, the problem is they're bringing the world in. With yeah, yeah, they're, you they're can. They're still trying to get their their source and resources from the world instead yeah. of from the vine. Yeah, right. They and, get their, that, their, yeah. their resources yeah. and their and their substance from the true vine. Then all this stuff will will tend to fade away. And I believe once that tend to happen, once that happens on a, on a mass scale, I think that will be the fullness of time. And that's and that's the thing we want to make sure people understand. I think the, even the theme of this is today is to try to say, look, because you said something earlier, said they don't care about the after life. Yeah. And yet that is the critical piece. That, that's that, what this is all about. That's, and that's, what he's trying to, and that's what he's trying to tell people. You know, uh, these things that this power, this this for this life here, is is if it, it's almost like vain glory. It's almost like that scripture said, "What profits a man to gain the whole world and loses his soul?" His soul. And and that's what I want to be able to emphasize even today is understand it does matter. It will matter. And history has shown you that everybody until the Lord comes back will die. Physical death. And then there's judgment, right? That's it, like Hebrews 9:27. It is appointed for every man to die once. And then there's judgment. And we I think one of the things about the gospel, the good news is you can get the judgment of eternal life now because of what God did through sending his Savior. And you don't need to use the world vain glory. Because I think that's why, you know, one thing I told people about that, the four temptations of Christ. And, or three, was it three? Three of them. Oh, you know, in the wilderness, when he was taken to the wilderness after being tempted. For 40 days and 40 nights, then these last three, <laughs> that last one, where the devil sit there and said, oh, I'll give you all this glory. Yeah. I'll give you, I'll give you all this glory. All you have to do is bow down and worship me. And, and Christ, I think that I know that was intentional for, for people to say, look, stop bowing down to vain glory. Because I can only imagine that the, the glory he was pouring out to was those that don't exist anymore. You know, obviously I don't think he needed, he could have <coughs> pointed to the, the, you know, stuff in the future and all that stuff. But I think most logical would be what you see now, what exists <coughs> at that time. And all those kingdoms don't exist anymore. And then we see kingdoms, empires, come, rise, right? And then they go. They crumble. They fall. So don't invest in the things of this world for your eternal life. You lose your eternal life for the things of this world, then it's no hope for you. And God wants to then say, I want to give you hope. That's what the good news is for. So as we show here, let's just check this out. Because of the world system, we're going to bring in here, we're going to start. Oh, let me go ahead and go live. <laughs> but the, the point is that we are live now, and we want to be able to tell people our goal is to talk about the fact is that we we was talking earlier, people, um, is that we we have to focus on eternal life. This is, this is really what the gospel is all about, is the fact of eternal life. And when we try to bring in the world system, the way the world thinks, the way the world operates, we need to understand the God of this world 
has blinded the minds of those who don't believe or don't know about the gospel so that they can stay in a path of eternal death. Well, Christ, the good news, the gospel is to show that is he gave away. John 14 said, Jesus, I'm the way, the truth. Yeshua said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to Father by him. And, and we need to make sure that, that is explained by, to everybody about the gospel. You can't go the way, any other way except for through Christ. That's the gospel. And the thing is, he had pointed the way. This direction is here. And we have the history of people, and this is his title. And we'll, we'll arrive from that is you need to understand that the history of that we have, especially in this country, in this world, the, the, with the total racism and, 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 and the atrocities that are done to people, uh, and it makes people feel, it makes children feel bad. What do you think would God feel? What do you think those people who did those atrocities, what do you think they are now? Because they're in judgment now, right? Death, it is, it is after death, right? After physical death, then there's judgment. And what do you think? And we want to make sure everybody listen to us. What do you think you're going to do when you go before God? What do you think your judgment will be when you go before God if you don't have an advocate? And your advocate said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandment. But if you don't want to keep his commandment, he even gave a new commandment to love one another. If you don't want to, if you don't take the advocate, hire him now, right? That's what the kid, you get this advocate now. He, he, his, his, his charge, is, he paid the price for the cost of the advocate, right? As a representative for you. And, and you can't sit there and keep trying to hide and cover up the history and think that that's going to benefit you. It doesn't benefit you. And especially if you don't change, because it's not only the fact that your history, our history, man, history is bad. <clears throat> to use bad things to keep covering it doesn't make it both change the fact. To me, it's like you almost got to keep trying to cover history real time, right? <laughs> You're trying to hide the past. And then you see the stuff, bad things that's happening, and you, I don't know how you, you can't keep up with it. It's like a dam of water that continues to keep coming through, and you, and you try to cover up the holes, and it does not make a difference. So, what I want to do, Brother Addison, and the people that are listening, or oh, this will go out today, and then it be cut up in half, 25 uh, for a segment, is think about your history. And think about the fact is that what does God, how do you think God feels about your history? And I think if Brother Asim would agree, is that not only talk about the world history, our country history, your individual history. There's some things that many of us have some things that we won't, don't even want people to know about because it's embarrassing. Uh, but covering it up for, to people is irrelevant because it's not, in the end, it won't matter what people think, right? It what matters what God thinks. Yeah. And if you don't want to take, I, that's why you need a savior, people, which is given to you freely. That's why we need a savior because we need the mercy, we need the grace in order to have eternal life. I just want to make sure everybody understands that. If you want eternal life, if you want mercy and grace, the only way you get eternal life is through mercy and grace. That's all you're going to get. You're not going to get it on your own ability. It doesn't matter what kind, whether you was a straight A honor student. It doesn't matter whether you were born with a silver spoon, meaning you were born rich. It doesn't matter if you were born with one particular color of skin or whatever. None of that will make a difference when you go before God. And that's what we want to be talking about today. So look at this, Brother As I'll let you bring in. I, I did break uh, two scriptures ahead of time. Is I was I was reading uh, the Old Testament last night. Yeah, numbers. And a couple of nights. And and I, I I like this right here. This is what uh, you can read. It is speak for yourself when you read it. But it's it's God blessing that He wanted the ministries. 
the priest at that time to give to the children of Israel. So I want you to read that for us here. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.